<clears throat> Welcome to Jets Rewind. I'm Marty Shupak. I'm joined by my two very close friends, Ray Clifford in Marysville, Ohio, Ralph Sharega, who's in uh, Belmont, Mass. We are uh, a couple of days removed from the uh, Jets winning uh, 21 to 13. I want everyone to give their reaction, and uh, we're going to start with. Uh, who am I going to start with? Ray, we're going to start with you, Ray. You're up first. Ray, how are you doing today? Oh, doing good. Uh, it's always a better weekend when we win a game. Ray, did you watch the game live or did you watch a tape of it? No, I had to I had to, I had had to. to work. I did catch, though, it just happened to be at break time when uh, when the uh, Devontae Adams touchdown drive happened. So that was kind of nice to see that. But uh, – Overall, I thought, uh, you know, what I – I watched up until this time, up until the Wilson touchdown because I wanted to see how they talked about that. Um, and then I saw the Adams one at work. But uh, um, overall, at least in the second half, they looked very, very competent. In the first half, we made a bunch of goofs. Uh, we'll go, you know, you talk about Corley and some holds. But I was pretty happy with the, the run game. That, that to me, I thought was a, a big improvement, um, especially with kind of a patchwork offensive line. So I thought, uh, I thought overall the line did pretty well, all things considered. But uh, but that first half was a little a little rough at times. <laughs> okay. But uh, overall, I thought it was a, a solid performance. Wait, what what happened to Simpson anyway? I never heard. Of uh, he mentioned it after the game. I don't. I might be mixing up. One guy has a groin. One guy has a hamstring. So I'm not sure which is which. Did that happen during the game, or uh, I, I'm not sure. Because so I, I felt yeah. like Mitchell was playing from the beginning. It seemed like. At uh, what point did Fashanu go in? Fashanu, uh, well. My Marty's buddy Jake Hansen was not doing well, and uh, at a, I, he he was one that got hurt too. He got hurt. I thought they pulled him because he was not playing oh, I well. Don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know at what point it was. Would you say second quarter or third quarter? Uh, yeah, I think second quarter. Yeah, I'm not sure. I didn't get the play count yet, mm -hmm. but uh, all right, Ralph. Let me hear your feelings about it, then I'll give you my. Well, this was sort of a tipping point. This game, obviously, if they lose the game, the season is a hundred percent over. Nobody can even rationalize, you know, them making the playoffs. But they 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 managed to win the game, so you know they live they live to see tomorrow. You know, and play another day. Uh, you know, you have a, a, just a trickle of hope. Um, I know they talked about Rodgers, the way he was sort of making a case for the, how they could win, uh, you know, get to the playoffs. And I get what he's trying to do. You know, he's trying to put some meaning into the games for himself. And uh, <clears throat> it's a funny thing about football. I've always been fascinated by, you know, you can watch a team. They can have the worst you know, be eight zero oh, and eight or something like that. When they win a game, and it, it, it's like the greatest thing. I mean, it, it means so much to them, and uh, I know this meant a lot to them. But the damn thing is, if they could have just found a way to win one of those damn games that they blew, mm -hmm. just one, that would have made all the difference. Four and five is very doable. Uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's frustrating, but. Uh, well, Ralph, you know, you know, it's the old thing we've been saying it over and over. We all liked Seabert in the preseason. You know, yeah, yeah. I, 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 and uh, early in the year, I, I, I said that the this early I was going to cost these guys their jobs, and uh, you know they just waited way too long, way too long, and uh, that's why I was kind of excited. I thought that they put Fashano in because Hanson made some bad plays. Finally, they were so, holding somebody accountable. But you say he might be hurt. I don't know. Just, yeah, minor from what I heard. Yeah. Uh, so, well, let, let me give you my yeah. uh, take on the game. It, it, it was The first half was, was really unwatchable. It was like uh, we've seen this movie before. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, if I didn't do the podcast, I probably would have went to bed, But um, uh, which is encouraging for all our fans out there. But the <laughs> second half – they were a different team. And I just want to put in perspective, the Jets right now are three and six, and they've been outscored by a total of 12 points, which in really, when you think about it, it's just incredible. But I thought the second half they started clicking. 
I thought Aaron Rodgers and Ray, you probably saw our text between Ralph and I, because oh, I mean I he, he looked like he looked like old and done the first half. And then all of a sudden he woke up. He actually had a nice little scramble. And um, as Ralph he, mentioned, he got he, this guy called back. Yeah, well, that was yeah. the was that the Fashanu? Oh home? yeah, that was very that was, very was borderline play. Borderline, God. Yeah. It was, oh, yes, <laughs> and, yeah. But he he did look better. Uh, we love that fourth down call. It's always great when he makes it. So I, you know, when Malachi Corley dropped the ball, I I just turned to my wife and I said, you know, how big a hole can this thing go? Every time you think <laughs> the bottom, it's like unbelievable. And, you know, with the Malachi Corley, you know, I, Boomer Esiason mentioned when it's your first touchdown in the NFL, you always want to hold on to the ball and take it to the sideline. You don't want to get rid of it. I just, I don't understand what these guys are doing. And I'll, again, I don't want to throw water on it, but after that, and Adams caught that fourth down pass for a touchdown. And then at the five or six yard line, he's holding it over his head. I'm saying, <laughs> what are you doing? We just experienced that. So all in all, a win is a win. They are um, three and six. We're going to go over a couple of things about the playoffs. So we all slept a lot better. Uh, there were a lot of good things. There were a lot of lousy things with, um, it looks like Joe Mixon was running at will, but we had, we had eight sacks, which I think believe is the third most in the NFL, but you know, the other teams haven't played yet. So uh, all in all, I think we're happy. But I, I want to ask, I'll start with Ralph on this one. Obviously, I think with that uh, superb catch, I thought two great catches. The second one was a highlight film by Garrett Wilson. Besides Garrett Wilson, Ralph, who would you give a game ball to that game? Uh, just I'll I'll ask that, but the the Garrett Wilson, the first Garrett Wilson catch to me was was really remarkable. I mean, he got that was a rope he threw, and <laughs> Jalen Peter Petrie had his arm out, and I think he was uh, obs uh yeah, he was uh, bothering his vision. I didn't even vision. yeah obstructed yeah. vision. Uh, I didn't even. I couldn't even see Garrett Wilson. I don't. I don't know how he held on to that. It was a, a, a bullet, and I it was a really remarkable play. And uh, I don't think it really gets as much uh, play as it should because because of the second one. Yeah. Uh, other guys, Quinton Williams, but definitely had his best game of the year. Uh, he was great. Um, Will McDonald, he. He's had multiple sack games earlier in the year, but this was his best game consistently. Best game, Ralph. He, you were on the money, yep. what he was doing, and the amount of times he was hold. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but go yeah. ahead. You know, and I've been seeing this with McDonald uh, late in games several times. He gets held all the time. The officials are looking right at it. You know, you look at that Fashano hold, which is ticky-tack. The officials in the first half of games, they just throw flags all the time at anything. And then at the end of the game, they let these guys do anything because I think the league says, we don't want you deciding the game. But, I, you know, at a certain point, he was getting, like, a choke hold. He, the guy was in a, giving him a choke hold, and they were looking right at him. And, and I, you know, I partly blame that on the coaching staff. they got to work these officials. Absolutely. I, 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 watched the Nick, I watched the Nick preseason game, and Thibodeau went after the officials because they were doing something to Brunson over and over. And sure enough, two minutes later, he gets a call. It works. And it'll certainly work with something that obvious. And they they gotta they gotta do something about they that. They gotta do they gotta be more like Parcells and Belichick. They gotta go to the referees and say, listen, you know, Bill, how's your day and everything, or how you doing? You gotta help me out. 99 is getting held all year long. Just pay attention to it a little bit. Ralph, there was one play, and I want you to give me your name for another game ball, but there was one play, if you saw it with McDonald, went past. Stroud and he was trying to come back. The guy was holding yeah, him like the neck, a beer right? hug. I never <laughs> like, saw anything like that. And I think I've seen, I, yeah, I've seen that a few times. Right with him. There. I know. I it's just ridiculous. And I'll tell you something interesting. When when they drafted McDonald, you know, I, I hadn't even looked at him because I he wasn't on my radar for the Jets. So I went and watched films of him on uh YouTube, and they were like film breakdowns and analysis. And I was reading commenters, and most of the commenters were Jet fans. It was about three or four Iowa State fans. 
And all of them said the same thing. He gets hold, held every play in college too. So, you know, and this is something that, you know, the officials are going to have to like <laughs> start giving the Jets a break. It was bad with Jermaine Johnson. It's worse with this guy. So, uh, me, so Rob, let me just ask you a question, and we're going to get to him, though. But you think uh, the way he improved from his first week, having Hassan Reddick in there is going to help out with the McDonald? Maybe. I think it, I think I think it will. I uh, you know somewhat because you know they're on opposite ends. I, I think actually having a great tackle next to you helps too. But uh, you know either way, he's he's going he's he's playing well, and hopefully Reddick will will get better with each week. Um, the, the one criticism I'll have of McDonald is there were times when he did give up, um, uh, um, you know, I can't even think of the word. Yeah. Totally. He let, he let the quarterback get outside the, uh, the pocket because he, he will do a spin move sometimes in. And I kind of feel like the judge should on plays like that, have a spy on the quarterback, do something, uh, because you don't want to take away his aggressiveness uh, he, he didn't get a sack, but he flushed them into two at least two sacks. Yes. One of them was, I think, DJ Reeds, and one was, I think, Quinn and Williams. And he recovered a fumble, which is not no small feat for a Jet, you know? <laughs> well, you know, if you were to say, like, um, uh, Quinn and Williams was the best defensive lineman, you might agree. Even though he didn't have a sack, I, I would say that uh, uh, McDonald was, like, 1B. One, one he was yeah. phenomenal. Ralph, who's your candidate for a game ball besides um, um, besides uh, Wilson? <laughs> Wilson, yes, I'm sorry. I'd give it to Quentin Williams. Okay, very good. Ray, how about you? Uh, I think uh, I would probably give it to I, I liked Quentin Williams too. I, I would give it to McDonald though. I thought he, he was disruptive as hell. I think I still think he needs to put on a few more pounds just to yeah. be a little more, uh, you know, be able to fight off the blockers a little better. Uh, I think, though, I don't know if it was Quinnen or or who, but I know the one time he got there, it was probably my favorite sack we had. He spun, you know, he got him. He kind of went past him, grabbed him, almost pulled him down one hand, and and when uh, Stroud got away, Jamie and Sherwood destroyed him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was uh, <clears throat> one of the good sacks that he he caused. Um, <clears throat> Quinnen did have has had probably the best last couple of games that you know of, of the year because he's been pretty silent recently. Right. But uh, but I thought McDonald had a had a great game, and I think his only thing is, like Ralph said, he lets him out of the pocket. I think he has that tendency to go, you know, high around the end, and then he's if he doesn't get there, he's way out of position. Mm. Guy runs underneath him and, and heads out of the pocket. So yeah, they probably need a spy, or he's got to kind of maybe try and keep it down a little lower where he keeps him inside. Okay, um, I'm going to surprise you. We, it's a, somebody we've been on all year, even Ooh. last year, and it's not a player, but I think it's cannot be overrated. I'm going to give it to Keith Carter. Oh, I had a it, feeling you were going to say that because. What he did, putting those two guys at guard, I just want to tell you, Olo Fashionu, he's never played guard in college. He's never played guard in high school. And they just stuck him in there. And I don't know. I he's even he, practiced there. Yeah. I don't know. You said what, Ray? He didn't practice? I don't think he even practiced no. there. And for him to do what he did, and from what I hear on some of the plays, going up to the line of scrimmage, uh, Joe Titman would tell him what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and as Ralph said, the one big penalty was kind of borderline ticky tacky. And look, I I'm not saying that uh, uh, Olu Fashionu is going to be the next Larry Little, but I'm saying for what he did to hold his own and for what Max Mitchell did to hold his own, um, Keith Carter made two great choices, putting them on the correct side, each of them, whatever he did. So, you know, going forward, I think this is a real good sign. I don't know if it's going to be a Wally Pimp that he's going to uh, switch positions permanently, but I think it's a great sign. I really do. Plus, and again, I don't want to, I don't want to be a downer, but, you know, our, our guard, um, what's his name from USC? Uh, oh, Vera Tucker. Vera Tucker. I mean, it's getting to the point where this guy, I don't know if he's 
if he's played more games than he's been out or he's been out more games than he played. What's, uh, what's he got this time? Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure what it is, but it just seems like, you know, you have some players that are that are constantly being injured and maybe he becomes another uh, our, the linebacker who's on Minnesota. What's his name, Ralph Cashman? Cashman, yeah. What's his first name? Blake Cashman, oh, Blake yeah. Blake Cashman, who couldn't stay on the field with the Jets, and maybe Elijah Vera Tucker will end up going to another team and it'll be coming all pro. Ray, did they extend him? No. Extend him. No. No, I don't think they're so. Not. I don't know if they're going to do that either at this point. But anyway, Keith Carter, who we all want to replace about – 50 times in the last two years. <laughs> I thought he did really well. And uh, while, um, all right, let's go right to this. Uh, Ralph, I want to ask you first, and we've been on him. We, Jets Rewind recognized his weaknesses, even in his rookie year, when he was a great cover guy. Is Sauce Gardner, is he through, Ralph? I think he definitely has a crisis of co confidence at this point. Uh, I, I don't think he's through. I think he he's going to need to be coached up, and uh, you know the tackling thing is embarrassing. It really is, and I mean I, I feel like they can teach him to wrap, you know, get down low and wrap guys up. It's not you know he's a football player. Uh, I've once or twice I've seen him make a decent tackle, but I, I feel like he's afraid. It, it looks like he's really gun shy to, to stick his nose in there and tackle. And, you know, teams are going to be exploiting that more and more. I don't think he's through yet, but I'm concerned about him. Ralph, you know, when we spoke about this, too, when he was at Cincinnati, he was a darn good tackler, if I remember. Yeah, I remember in the against Alabama, he made some really nice tackles on uh, Jameis and Williams. Uh, but uh, I don't know what's happened to the guy. Uh, and you know, it's interesting. And, and, Ray, I want to hear how you feel. Since they played um, Denver, and um, Sean Payton came out and they said, you know, they, they wanted to put him in a position where he had a tackle. I think every coach, and I've, I've heard this on a couple of NFL shows now, a lot of coaches are starting to run and pass right at Sauce Garner. Yeah. So what's your take on him? Do you think he's done or what? You asking me? Yeah. Your name's oh. Ray? Oh yeah, but you just <laughs> you ahead, just were talking, right? just stopped and said, "What do you think?" <laughs> well, you know, right, let's let's let's, let's run the tape back and for whoever. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think he's done, but um, he definitely needs to work on you know tackling, of course. I mean, and covering and not holding. I was just to say the holding on the covering because uh, they're looking for that now, and so he's not getting away with it like he did for two years. And uh, he's got to make some adjustments. And uh, if he can, I think he can still be great. But if uh, I mean, and he doesn't have to be a, you know, a Ronnie lot, but that's how he, he's kind of doing that. I'm going to knock him over thing. And it's he's not he's not a big guy. So who I can't was it the running back he tried it with. And even Herb Street brought up, you know, you got to tackle, you know, and and that's uh, that's where to me. He's he's got a just basic fundamentals, and that is coaching too. I don't know if he's shying away from it for what reason, and I'm not sure why he keeps seem to tweak an ankle every game now. So I don't know what's up with that. I mean, because and I do think it was kind of real because a, a a receiver there at one point in the game outran him on a cross pattern, who I don't think had any business outrunning him for an easy catch. So. Maybe the ankle is bugging him, but that doesn't excuse holding and that doesn't excuse not tackling. So he's got things to work on. And, and, but I think he can, I mean, it, but it's, you know, it's up to him. He's got, I'd say, I'm going to, I'm going to do it and, and, you know, start playing like he should. He needs a, he needs Ray. He needs a pick six. That's what he needs. He needs. Well, a pick period would be yeah. nice. All right. All right. Let's go to a new category. This is Marty's. Buying and selling. I'm going to give you a statement. You just tell me, are you buying and selling this? Start with Ray. At three and six, Ray, are the Jets still in the playoff hunt? You buying or selling it? Uh, I'm sell. I mean, obviously, technically, they're still in, but I'm selling. Okay. You, you don't think they're going to do it at this point. How about you, Ralph? I know that the Jets and their front office think they're in the hunt. 
uh, I'm, uh, you know, I, sh I should be listening to Ray because Ray is, Ray is, he's, he's got more common sense. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say that I think they're probably not. Okay, just so you know, last year, and I heard it on one of these NFL shows with Boomer Sice, and or well, maybe it was someone else. Last year, there were two teams that started at three and six and made the playoffs. They mentioned one, maybe Ray could uh, verify it. One is the Cleveland Browns, but I didn't, they, they couldn't think of a second team. So I can't think of the second team either. Is That's that when Flacco got hot. Okay, so they were three and six. You remember that? I the believe they were, yeah, because everybody was down on them there, and then Flacco came in and started tearing it up. I, I can do a quick check here and see. Well, what I know the year before Jacksonville, they lost like five games in October. They were in bad. Remember, and then they ran the table and they actually won yes. a playoff game. Yeah, uh, it happens. Um, but uh, the question is, can you know this team's going to win some more games? The question yeah. is, can they put together four or five in a row? Uh, right. The okay. schedule is favorable, but how good are they? We don't. Well, we, we've yeah. shown we can lose to the worst of the worst. Sure. Yeah. Well, that that that's it. I I actually think I, I'm I'm going to be a buyer here that they are in the playoff hunt. I'm trying to be the optimist. The, the only negative to me, and we're going to get into him later, is the coach Jeff Olbrick. I'm just very nervous about this guy, but I'm going to say they are. All right, and the next question, we'll start with Ralph. Is Garrett Wilson a superstar, or is it just one game? Are you buying or selling that Garrett Wilson is a superstar? Right? You know, I'm glad you brought that up, because I got a text from Matt Lewis. He said to me at the end of the game, if you can believe it or not, Matt, uh, Garrett Wilson with one hand is more reliable than Alan Lazard is with two hands. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett Wilson... With all due respect to Marty's all-time favorite, Jet Altoon, is the most talented wide receiver the Jets have ever had. Uh, and I think from here on in, if Rodgers stays healthy, he's going to put up some numbers. He's already near the top in the league in a lot of statistics right now. Are you buying it? Is he a superstar right now? Is he a superstar right now? No, he hasn't earned that yet, but he has superstar talent. And he could be, you know, if, if, if he... <clears throat> You know, if it all comes together, he would be a superstar, but he he, has, he still hasn't earned that uh, that designation yet. Okay, Ray, are you buying it? Is Garrett Wilson a superstar right now? Are you buying or selling? No, I agree. It's not yet that he could be. But here's one thing, having, you know, seen Garrett Wilson for, you know, three years at Ohio State before getting to the Jets that I learned early on was uh, uh, when your Chris Olave got hurt, and at the end of the year, for I don't know if it was one or two games, I think it was one. So Garrett Wilson became the number one receiver at Ohio State. And he was having a great year. But as soon as he was the number one receiver, he struggled. And and much like he's done with the Jets, he you aren't seeing the deep stuff like, like he did in the training camp and stuff. I'm not sure he's ready to be the number one guy. If we didn't bring in – Devonte Adams. I don't know that anything that happened uh, in that game on Thursday would have happened. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> so, Ray, Ray you telling see. me that uh, Olave was considered the number one guy over Wilson? I didn't oh, realize he that. Was. Yeah, huh. he definitely was. Olave was was you know everything because well, much like Wilson, but he's bigger than Wilson. Is that? Uh, he Olave could go up and catch anything and everything at, at all kinds of angles. Uh, I think. Well, I know he was really uh, good, but I figured they were about equal. Uh, well, by the end, they were a lot closer, you know, as far as one and two. But Olave was always the the number one guy. As far as the defenses went, they were all, you know, if the, the guy who got doubled, if one or the other did, it was going to be Olave. And Olave, I think the only thing that's uh, slowed Olave down in the NFL was he took a horrific hit. His uh, first year and got a serious concussion. I mean, it knocked him out cold and I think that's affected him greatly in his development. And I don't know if he'll ever be a hundred percent what he was when he first started out, but so that's the thing about Wilson is he isn't showing me that when he gets elite guys like uh, 
what's his name? Christian Gonzalez, Gonzalez or Sertan. Yeah. They, they, I'm not saying they shut him down, but they definitely don't let him run wild. You know, he hasn't got that kind of ability. And I think that's what Devonte Adams has brought for Wilson to, right. to the team. One question, Ray, because I, I did, you got me into the Ohio state uh, right around that time. And I love those two receivers. But uh, from what I remember, Olave, he hardly ever dropped the ball. But Garrett Wilson in the NFL will drop a ball once in a while. Did he drop uh, any balls at Ohio State? Yeah, it, w- it was similar. He he is always going to have, you know, occasional drops and stuff. But, you know, the the plays he makes, you just got to you just got to put up with those. And, and he he bailed Rogers out. I was oh told no, Marty. Yeah. Uh, every pass Rogers threw was behind him, right. low, and, and yeah. he's twisting around and snagging him with his hands. And then what he does after he catches? Yeah, him to make I, it yeah I, I don't have any problem with his hands at all. Uh, you know, every receiver is going to drop one occasionally. He's had his bumps, but uh, I think he, he's hitting his stride now. And Ray is right with Adams there, and uh, I, I think that. Well, you might, I don't know if you agree with me. I think he's probably the most talented uh, pair of receivers the Jets have ever had. I went through, you know, Maynard and Sauer. There was Toon and Walker had one big year in 86. And then you had Keyshawn and Krebet. And then the one year with uh, Brandon Marshall was it Eric Decker was yes. with him. Uh, but physical talent, I think these guys beat them all. Uh, in, right. Uh, it, right. it, it should be fun. That's what I'm looking forward to now is right. how, how much better these guys can get from here on in. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, I'm hoping this offensive line works out because when he has protection, it, it, it's really nice to watch. With, with Garrett Wilson, I think, and I'm not giving him a break because all receivers do it, but he's so anxious after he gets a reception to try to break loose for a TD using his incredible moves and as Ralph pointed out uh, when we first got him, he was an excellent basketball player in the state of Texas, I believe, Ralph, in high school. Yeah. Yeah. He's just an incredible athlete. He thinks he could break every reception for a touchdown, and he's got to make sure he catches it before he does that. I actually think he is a superstar in my mind. I think that, you know, with the quarterback play he's experienced, it's it kind of drags him down. But I think the guy is unbelievable. And I agree, my favorite – at was out tuned, but right now, and my wife could verify it, he's been my favorite Jet since they got him. I just love this guy. I just don't want him to get hurt, and I just want him to keep throwing it up to this guy. He's just a phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal athlete. Uh, Ralph, we're going to start with you. Buying or selling? Todd Downing, is he a good offensive coordinator? Yeah, I'm liking him. You know, I mean, obviously the bar was set pretty low with <laughs> LaFleur Le- and, and Hackett, my gosh. Uh, so... Yeah, I think he's an improvement, and uh, I'm willing to stick with him. I'm comfortable with him. Uh, I, I uh, you know, I, I, I guess I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Ray? You buying or selling? Is I'm buying. Bad? You know, I think ever since he took over, we've actually looked like a fairly competent offense for the most part. I like his play calls. I like how he mixes things up. I think he's a lot of the reason Brees Hall is looking so much better these last few games. Cause if you notice he's, he's to the outside a lot. Right. And so I like that. Um, I will say in, I never thought I'd defend him, but in LaFleur's defense, I would have liked to seen what he would have done if it was Rogers and, and this offense instead of what right. he had to work with before. But um, I like Downing, I, 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 and I think he'll just get better, honestly. I hope yeah. he will, anyway. I, you mentioned Brees, so I will say, uh, I don't know what happened when he dropped the pass right in his hand, but what yeah. really killed me, after we got that fumble, the play after, he puts it right <laughs> on the ground again, and he recovered it, thank God, but it was driving me nuts, really You nuts. know, that that turf there, I, I hate that turf. Oh, People yes, are, yes. Just, guys are tripping all over the place on that well, stuff. they're replacing that. I thought they already they, did. They, they, like they replace it every year. They come out, they say, well, we did studies. <laughs> it's just as good as grass. I don't buy it at all. I think it's crazy. Uh, Ralph, okay, to you. Uh, you brought up, Ralph, a few weeks ago when I said I like Joe Tippman, and you brought a great point. You said that he's got to take some of the responsibility for not getting these third and one and fourth and ones, not moving the pile, 
And if you looked at him, if you ever saw him without a shirt, you wouldn't never believe he's an NFL player if he yeah. was high. He doesn't look heavy at all. Do you think, are you buying or selling? Is he the long-term answer at center? Yeah, I, I think so. I watch him, and I, he's he, he looks very good in pass protection. I, I think he's fine. Uh, I think they're doing a little better as far as that stuff. It's not all his fault. You know, the guards and just the scheme, I think, something was just wrong with it. But uh, is is he uh, going to be an all-pro? I, I don't know about that, but I, I think he'll be a solid center at, at, at a minimum. Okay. Uh, Ray, what about you? Are you buying or selling Joe Tittman as a long-term answer at center? I'm I'm buying. I mean, he he's taller than most centers. I think it's part of why he looks so thin. But I do. I think he will put on weight here at some point, a little bit more, and be a little stronger on the run, get a little more push. But I, I like him all in all. I like him so far. I think he'll. I, I think he could be a long term answer. Okay. All right, uh, Ray. I'm going to start with you. Are you buying? <laughs> Moving forward, is Hassan Reddick the key? To the defensive line? I think the key will always be, I'm not buying, I, I think the key will always be Quinnen, but because of the guys we lost after last year, I think he is, I think he's a big key to Will McDonald's improvement here, especially recently where he seems to be more along the Jermaine Johnson mode. Um, but I, I think you know, I think Hassan brings uh, a, more of a threat from that side, so they've got to concentrate on him more, and it, it gives McDonald a little more room to do his thing. Um, but I, I still think Quinnen, when he gets that push up the middle, I think he changes everything, and especially if he's you know stuff in the run as right. well. And he actually, even though we saw Joe Mixon look like he ran at will in some of those holes, I, yeah, I think Kinlaw is a much better player when when Queen and plays the way he is. Yeah. Right, quickly, uh, top of your head, what are the odds that the Jets re-sign uh, Hassan Reddick next year? Give me odds: two to one, three to one, ten to one. Yeah, uh, maybe six to one. Uh, yeah. I just, I think. Uh, I think they'd like to, but if he's wanting more, I don't know what the, the the deal was for this year exactly. But I know they gave him back his twelve million or whatever. But uh, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. It depends on how big of a rebuild they plan on doing at the end of the year if if this uh, season just tanks out. Right, or maybe it depends on how Jermaine Johnson is coming along with yeah, the rehab that as well. You know, and Ray is. Do you think he could be a candidate to? Um, franchise or it'd be too expensive i don't think they will I, I mean i think that would be a crushing blow to our what whatever salary cap space we're going to have i think because are they you know this along the same lines are they going to try and extend Devonte adams i mean that'll obviously depend on rogers more than anything okay there you go uh, ralph are you buying or selling is Hassan reddick the key to the defensive line moving forward no, I, I don't think he is either. Uh, I, I think the interior is like Ray was saying. Um, you know, I don't know how much more, how much, how much more reps he's going to get. You know, they still play Michael Clemens an awful lot. Uh, I'm he had two sacks, Ralph. Michael, had, Clemens, did he yeah. have two? Did he have he two? Credit for a second one. I didn't see it, but the first uh, one was he, great. The, the one, the one, the one at the end, toward the end of the game, when he uh, ran, you know. But the interesting was the one toward the end of the game. He was actually playing tackle, and so, and it was a, it was a long, it was a third and fourth and long. Maybe that's something to think about for them on third or fourth and longs to put him at tackle, get a little more pass rush inside because he's certainly not a good pass rusher on the edge. Uh, no, I, I think the uh, yeah, I think Quentin Williams is the key uh, to uh, to the out uh, to the defensive line. All right, Ralph. Do you think, are you buying um, this? Jeff Albrecht, is it possible that he grows into the job for the rest of the year? Are you buying or selling? All right, I'm glad you brought this up because I have a, a hypothetical, a scenario I want you to talk to you about. Let's say that the Jets for the rest of the year go six and two, which would bring them to nine and eight. And they not don't quite make the playoffs, mm -hmm. but they win basically seven out of their last nine and they look good. And Rodgers decides, I want to run this back another year, and I want you to sign 
Adams again for another year because I think we can do something. And Woody goes for that. What do you do with Jeff Ulbrich? What do you think they would do with him? Do you think they'd keep him? I My opinion is if unless you see improvement with these delay game penalties, these stupid, idiotic mental mistakes, these throwing the ball down uh, before you reach the goal line, unless you see improvements in that area, you can't keep him in my mind. If you see that somehow, some miracle that he instilled some sort of discipline into this team, which I haven't seen any indication yet. But again, we're, uh, we're nine games into the season. If you see improvement there and the team likes him and we see they look like a real team, I would say, I think maybe somehow you bring them back. How about you, Ray? Well, I think uh, there's a strong, if, if they made like uh, Ralph's, scenario i think there's a really good chance he'd be back pending on if rogers says i'm doing another year and that because if you get rid of him and bring back rogers you've got to keep in mind whoever they bring in might want to change the offense again and i don't know if that's a if that's a, a recipe for success at this point in rogers career unless you're going to keep the offense the same keep downing you know um, I think if they were to do that and Roger said, I'm coming back, I think he, I think he'll stay. I, you know, I also, that's, that's, think a key, yeah, that's a key point, Ray, uh, that I want to bring up is that that's, that would be a problem if they brought in a new coach, he'd want a new offensive system. And I don't think Rogers would go for that. No. So I came up with two other scenarios. I think the most likely would be to keep Ulbrich, but, Another possibility maybe would be to bump up Todd Downing. I don't know if they think he's up to the job. Wait, the wait, wait. Todd Downing's head coach? Yeah. I feel, I, I'm not, you know, <laughs> just based on the fact that he's done such a good job with the has, job. but I, I don't see it, but go ahead. Uh, but the third scenario, which I came up with, which I thought was genius, was <laughs> they, they, they could hire uh, Mike Vrabel, who has oh, worked with Todd Downing, and uh, they, so they wouldn't have to change the system. I love Rabes. That would be oh, that would be that I would be that. that would be very good. I I think that would be probably keep Ulbrich too. As yeah, the, that's what I'm going to say. What would they do? If you think Ulbrich would take a, a demotion back to uh, coordinator? I, I, I don't know if he would do that. I think if you remember, uh, the Jets denied him uh, speaking to the uh, San Francisco 49ers in the right. and that yeah. wanted him. Now, I don't know how that works if they – As their defensive coordinator? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a couple of years ago. And the Jets will give him position. Now, I, I understand that if it's a step up, they can't deny it. Right. But I guess if it's a step down, Ralph, do you know what the rule is? Or no. Or, or, or even, it's, if it's it's a, even if it's if it's a lateral move, they can they, deny they, it too. Um, yeah, it's got to yeah. be a promotion. It's got to be a promotion, yeah. Yeah. Um, look, look, I would I would love that. Vavril back and uh, – and you keep Downing. I think Downing, I really like him as offensive coordinator. I don't know if he's that good or it's just a contrast to Hackett, yeah. to be honest with you. It's hey, and that's the other thing. What would happen to Hackett? You think he'd still hang on? I think I think he would. You know what it'd be like, Marty? It'd be like Drew Bundini Brown when he was a Muhammad Ali. <laughs> <laughs> just so he can, just so he can shout. Uh, yeah, something. yeah. Or, or this hangers on, like Red West with uh, Elvis Presley, you know? <laughs> they just hung around, these guys. <laughs> right, right. Part of the entourage, right? Yeah. Is, you're absolutely right. Yeah, we'll see. And who was the old guard for the uh, 76ers? What was his name? The great player? You know, he... he... Maurice Cheeks? No, 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 not that no old. Way back. No, 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 not that far back. You know who he is. What the heck's the guy's name? He retired like four or five years ago. Very good ball player. Guy. What's that? Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson, yeah. He had like an entourage. He was like... Oh, yeah. like, like <laughs> A pos... He had a posse. Yeah. A posse, like 25 and 50 guys. All right. We're going to jump up. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to ask you, and I don't know how to determine. I'm, it seems logical that if the, um, uh, the Jets are coming off a win, so you would think, and I'll start with Ralph, that, you know, uh, Tuesday is the trade deadline. 
And I have, are they sellers on Monday? But coming off a win, it seems very logical that they're not going to be sellers. I would just want each of yours opinion. Go ahead, Ralph. Yeah, I mean, like I said, this was a tipping point. If they had lost the game, I think they would have been sellers. But no, I don't think they're going to be sellers at all. And uh, it's kind of an awkward moment for the uh, trade deadline to come up. But that's the way it is. And uh, so we'll see if this is fool's gold or uh, or what. Um, you know, they got Arizona, <clears throat> a team like Ray said that they could beat or lose to. And Ray, there's a couple of good Ohio State receivers in that game, I guess. Huh? Yeah, there is. <laughs> a couple of guys. I, I hate to see Sauce try and uh, tackle Marvin Harrison. That could get ugly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. I mean, he'll work, he'll work him over if he can even play. I don't know what the status is with the ankle, but – uh, I, I think Harrison is, you know, the biggest threat we've had. I know we've faced some good receivers, you know, especially in Minnesota, but he's just so big, strong and fast. Uh, he's going to be a handful. Yeah. And, uh, Ray, do you think that they're not going to be sellers on Monday? Uh, I was prepared for them to be, but I don't think they will after that win. I mean, I think Woody's hanging on to every you know last thread of hope that this turns around somehow for him, and you know so do I. But I'm skeptical. But so do I. But I, you know, obviously, if they if they become sellers, obviously they're they've thrown in the towel, and I don't think Woody wants to. I don't think Woody wants that kind Let of. Let me over. answer this, Ray. If if the Vikings come to the Jets, offer them two twos and a three for Sauce Garner, what would you do if you were GM? Well, if I was, I'd take it, but um, but I don't think the Jets will. I don't think they'll right. even entertain any offers for him or for Garrett Wilson. Now, maybe one of the running backs could be on the market, which would probably be Brees, even though he's had some good games. I think they think that Braylon Allen's definitely a, a guy who can step right in and take his place. So I think if they got a good enough offer for Brees, they'll, they'll consider it. Yeah. But, okay. I I don't see. I we all love Braylon Allen, but and he he's always going forward. I love that. But the way Brees is running, he I I, oh, I know. I, I don't see the acceleration. Ralph, two twos and a three from the Vikings for Source Gardner. What do you? Uh, think? Yeah, I would take it, but I agree with Ray. I don't think the Jets would. Now, if you said, how about a one and a two, one and two twos? Would the Jets do it? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Frankly, I think. Uh, uh, Ray's favorite player, Brandon Eccles, could do just as bad a job as Sauce is doing right now for the rest he's of the year. He's a better year. tackler. Yeah, he's a better tackler. He's got better hands. Uh, <laughs> Clearly. Uh, I think I, I don't think Sauce is going to be that uh, going to help them that much this year. I think his confidence is shot. shot. You can right. just look at you can just look at his face every time the officials throw a flag. It's like he just he doesn't know what to do. He just uh right. yeah. All right. A couple of old unders I put on. Uh, I'll start with uh, Ralph. Jet wins this year, eight and a half. Gun to your head. What do you say now? Uh, I'm going to go eight, Marty. I go under. Okay. How about you, Ray? Yeah, I got to go under at this point. I mean, if they get on a roll and and uh, can you know win a few, maybe they'll keep it going. But I got to see them do it more than once. I'm going to go over. For some reason, I, I all of a sudden become bullish on the offensive line from what I saw last game. Well, I have to say, having Adams and Wilson is really exciting. I mean, <laughs> I, if, if their offensive line is decent, they could really do some damage. Right. Adams clearly can still play. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay, next I'm going to start with Ray. Eight games left. Aaron Rodgers, six and a half starts. Over or under, Ray? Uh. I think it'll be over, um, but you know who knows with this offense. If the offensive line plays like it did in this game, uh, he's got a good shot at it. Okay, uh, Ralph, over. I, you know, I think he's going to go over because I think he's going to have that Brett Favre type mentality. Even if he's hurt, he's going to want to play, and I, not not necessarily a good thing. But I think it's <laughs> you know what Aaron wants, Aaron's going to get. It. Okay, there you go. All right, uh, start with Raft. What about you, Marty? What did you say? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say over. I think, you know, like a week ago, we were talking about he's not going to finish the uh, 
this season. You know, he looks more and more brittle and more old, but I like what I saw from him. Like I said, I'm bullish on the offensive line right now. All right, Ralph, Devontae Adams with eight games left, over under five and a half TD catches. Yeah, I think you're right on the money there. Uh, I I think it'll probably be around five or six. So uh, <laughs> I'm straddling the line here. I'll go six over. There you go. All right, Ray, how about you? Sorry, you're going to have to repeat the question for me. <laughs> I was looking at the highlight on the Ohio State game. What's the score now? Well, Ohio State looked like they scored, but uh, Will Howard got hit right before he crossed the goal line. It went off his leg and over the pie line and out of bounds. Oh, my God. That sounds 14 familiar. To 10, <laughs> 14 to 10, but Penn State has got the ball at the 20 instead of it being 21 yeah. to 10. Well, so. all, for all you Jets Rewind fans, we are uh, – taping this it's like saturday afternoon we started at around 20 to 1 so if we knew that ohio state game and penn state was on now we'd probably do it later in the day so we have it on our screens but ray the question was um geez what was the question ralph <laughs> oh, about Devontae about adams over under five and a half td uh receptions he has one or he has the one uh I'll go over. I think as long I mean, now I was going to ask you guys, is he in the protocol or anything for concussion? Because they were talking about he it. He came back, so came I guess back. not. So, yeah. So he yeah. passed it. Yeah. Okay. And okay. I'm going to go over to here. This is what – oh, uh, the, Ralph, you answered that question, right? Yeah, I did. Okay. I'm going to start with Ray. Okay, don't fall off your chairs. You ready? Over under one and a half TDs, Malachi Corley. Under. Ray. Ralph. Yeah, I'll go under. I, 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 what do you think is going to happen to him next week? Do you think they're going gonna... to? I, I think they're going to use him. Uh, I, you know, look. He was back in the game after that. Yeah, what, he, what he put him in for at least a play. But look, it was a horrible thing. And uh, I think the guy has some speed, acceleration. It was a beautiful oh, yeah, play. Really. So, yeah. you know. The he, irony is nobody touched the Yak King, so he never got to show his Yak that's off. True. That's true. But the fact <laughs> that Lazar, Lazard's on the injured reserve, and yeah. I don't know if they brought up another receiver who we like, like Brandon Smith or, or anything like that. I haven't heard anything. But I think he'll be active moving forward. So I think he will get uh, some more chances. And I like what I saw from him. So I'm going to go over with that. What do you think of trying him on some running plays? I mean, not just sweeps, yeah, but I, regular running plays. More like you did with Debo Samuel. Type yeah, of yeah. That That's actually when they drafted him, the name Debo Samuels came up. because actually, Constantly, yes. <laughs> because that, his name kept coming up when uh, Robert Sala was here. He was just in love with that guy. So, you know what was weird about that play? Yeah. Is when, when they went and reviewed it and everything, he said – uh it was a fumble. If uh, if uh, the Jets recovered, it would have been a touchdown. If uh, if uh, Texans recovered, it would have been a touchback. And if if nobody touched it, it would have been Jets ball with the one. And if you look at that ball, it rolls <laughs> and it rolls as soon as it hits the white, it stops. If it had stopped a foot sooner, we'd have had right. the ball. With the well, one you know, there was the exact same play in a uh, oak. <sighs> It was uh, Florida uh, University of uh, Central Florida. They were playing, I don't know, some team. Uh, it might have been Oklahoma or Oklahoma State, something. Pick six by the uh, Florida guy. It must have been about a 60-yard run. Really great play. And he, exa he dropped it just like uh, Corley on about the half-yard line. And they didn't notice it until later, but the ball just sat there at the one. And so Florida got the ball. UCF got the ball at the one. Of course, the Jets don't get a break like no. that. No, it was no. unbelievable. And the, that game had loss written all over, but they ended up pulling it out. So with that, we're going to start to close this out. Anything else you guys want to mention at all? I mean, can the Jets contain uh, – Tyler Murray. Oh, <laughs> well, we know that those kind of quarterbacks are not tough. good for Jets. But look at uh, Stroud. He didn't have, he had a horrible passing game, but it seemed he like he ran a few times. Like, it was ridiculous. He and he's not even a great, he's not a great runner compared yeah. to Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. That's why McDonald has to hold his, his, yeah. um, the one hey. side. Let him yeah, against right. guys like that, you've got to have containment. I, I, I like what Ralph said about put a spy on him. Yeah, definitely. I don't know if you put an extra DB. I don't know if you have Eccles in there. I, I don't know what you do, but 
you have to do something. It drove me crazy on one of the runs. I think it was Strat was running, and I saw, I, I thought it was uh, our number 44, where his back was to him, and he wasn't that far away, and he kept going away. And I'm yelling, turn around, turn around. It, was, it just drives me nuts. And it just seems the same uh, problems happen over and over again to our team. Anyway. I got one out. question Go ahead, for you. Ray. Because uh, – what did you think on that Garrett Wilson uh, second touchdown? Did you think they were going to overturn it? Because I, in, in, I, in, I, in real time, I thought he wasn't in. My son Michael Schupak thought he was in, and I thought that they wouldn't overturn it, and I was pleasantly surprised. Ralph, how yeah. about you? Um, when I saw the replay, I figured that they would overturn it, but not not when I first saw the play. You know, it's so funny. So, how, so many plays – with receivers, you look at them and say, oh, he's way out of bounds. And then you see in slow motion and go, my God, he's actually in bounds. Right. And that was another one of them. It's really remarkable. Uh, yeah. I didn't realize that your foot and then your shin on the same leg counted as two. Well, that's an interesting question. I kept saying, does he need the two feet in or not? But I guess a different body part makes contact in the end zone. It completes yeah. the play. Well, apparently, I, I heard Boomer Sison say, I didn't watch the Giant game, but the week before, who's their receiver who makes these circus catches? Brian, uh, uh, not um, – uh, what's George, his name? George Pickens, is it? No. Oh, on Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh is Pickens. He was, he was griping. But apparently, there was one play. I don't know how he did it, how he could do it, uh, you, how it's humanly possible, but he did two toe, toe taps with one foot, and I thought I heard Boomer say two toe taps with one foot equals a toe tap with each foot. Really? That's wow. I don't quite understand. I did not see the wow. play. I'd love to see it. I have never heard that. And they <laughs> called it incomplete, and he said it should have been complete. I never heard that either. So, Pickens was griping that, that on that about the call with. Uh, did you see the play, Ray? Uh, no, I didn't see the Pickens one. I'm just I, wondering I was, how you can even do two toe taps. No, that's you see, that's what I'm wondering too, Ralph. It's like yeah. physically. And by the way, talking about receivers, um, all my giant fan friends are all over me because <laughs> I was so big on Malik Neighbors, and it seems that he's got the dropsies, which I, I watched this guy in college. This guy was lights out. I don't know what's going on with him. He, he was uh, making some plays, though. He uh, oh yeah, he he's making productive. plays. But he, he, the amount of drops, I think it was three last game. He yeah, wow. You know, it's funny. I, well, I was looking up the top statistical statistics for receivers to see where Wilson stands. And, Ray, I think nine out of the ten guys are either from Ohio State or LSU as far as receivers go in this league. McLaurin yeah. is up there, too. Uh, wow. it's, it's like crazy with those it's two only, schools. It's only going to get worse because Ohio State's got two or three but, really good receivers now again. But, you know, that's the argument. And as much as we all are so high on Garrett Wilson, that's my argument that there's a chance they won't resign him. It's a good point, Marty. But the question is, is Garrett Wilson that special or is he just another really excellent receiver? Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, can you, is, you know, <laughs> by the end of this year, you might say, wow, we got to keep this guy because he's a Hall of Fame talent. Um, by the way, Brian Thomas, the other LSU receiver, is having a really kick-ass year too. And I was kind of, I was kind of hoping to get him if they didn't get Odunza. Uh, in, or, but uh, oh, we got Malachi Corley, the fourth best receiver on the board. That's right, which would be <laughs> over Brian Thomas. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Ray? Anything else you want to add? No. Just okay. Uh... We're going to close it out. They, we have a few days off, so we can actually watch football on Sunday and be very relaxed. You know, it should be fun. We'll see. All right, for Ralph Sharega, for Ray Clifford, and for Marty Shupak. And uh, listen, I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, we're a few days before the election. I want everyone to go out and vote. I'm not telling you who to vote for, but, you know, my grandfather, Grandpa Frank, who came from Europe. I got to tell you, Ray, you're going to love this. Um, his favorite holiday was not one of the religious holidays. His yeah, favorite holiday good. was election day. Because where he came from, he couldn't believe that you come here and you could vote to see who's in office. And on election day, he would get up at 4.30 in the morning, put on his best suit and tie and everything. He couldn't wait to vote. So I want to urge all Jets Rewind fans, vote 
for whoever you think is going to give you and your family the best future. So with that, we're going to close this out for Jets Rewind. Until next time.